everybody and welcome back to the Blues Not channel. So two things before I talk about the main thing. One, this will probably be the last time I will actually use green markers to put everything like a match preview and review because I just realized that it looks absolutely dreadful and ugly with just putting all the text in green. I mean, I did it last time uh, with, I think, with my Champions League uh, preview and review video and that one didn't have a lot of problem but it just seemed like putting everything with the green marker and just kind of congest it like this just looks really really ugly and I think the only time I should ever use the green marker is either if I want to put like a note on each of the games or just use it when there actually is not a lot of games going on in my match preview and review um, but yeah so that's the first of all second of all it is currently 11 40 p.m. right now it's only 20 minutes before it is Friday and I just got back from the Sharks game the Sharks of course won 2 nothing over the st. Louis Blues uh, it was a pretty good game uh, I'm not going to be talking about this game because I am not a hockey expert okay I am not a hockey analysis and if you guys want to know a little bit more about that game then make sure you guys check out this YouTube channel called the hockey guy uh, he does pretty much the same thing with what I do with match preview and review only he does hockey and he doesn't do like MLS and soccer like I am doing right now and speaking of which let's actually talk about this week's game um, it's the second week of the season uh, there's gonna be nine games this weekend which means that there's only 18 teams playing this week game there's gonna be five teams this weekend that has the bye week and actually I put it right here and that one of the five teams, including my San Jose Earthquakes um, who will have a bye week this week which means that this gives me a chance to catch up uh, the rest of the league and watch pretty much a lot of the games and just don't have to focus on the San Jose Earthquakes playing and also two of the five teams did play CCL and are still in CCL and have to play their second leg so it's always good that you know MLS gives teams that is currently still in CCL a break before the crucial second leg I mean sorry Ripple um, sorry New York uh, you guys had your break last week and if you complain that you didn't get a break before your kind of CCL midweek match against T1 um, well like I said you had it last week and I'm gonna get to what their situation is going to be when they play against Portland in that game but yeah so you know the other team is gonna be FC Dallas and the Union and those are the five teams that has the buy um, there's also going to be three teams that will be playing their first game of the season those three teams are the team that did not play in the first week of the season and they will of course play their first game of the season and I think all those three teams are all at home oh wait no they're not because Colorado is playing their first game and they're actually going on the road uh, New York actually is playing at home and um, uh, who was the other team that played playing their first game okay oh well we'll just kind of go through and then we'll find out who else is playing oh Chicago yes yeah, Chicago is playing their first game and they're also playing home so it's just the Rapids are going to be the only team that hasn't played a single game will be starting on the road for the first game in the second week but yeah without further ado let's actually begin with the first game uh, it's gonna be Columbus against the Montreal Impact Columbus made a huge statement last week by beating Toronto FC and they didn't just beat Toronto FC anyway they beat them at BMO Field a place that nobody has ever won since 2016 it's been over a year since anybody has gone to BMO field and got all three points and they did it in a very convincing way too I mean you know the crew is one of those teams that a lot of people kind of slept in and kind of didn't think that they will have enough mainly because of what happened with Justin Merrim and also Ola Kamara left the team two of the best key player from that crew team that made the playoffs last year and make that playoff run but it just seems like even without Kamara and just the mirror on the team against Toronto they 
didn't look like they missed those guy and I think maybe that has something to do with the supporting cast for the crew that really started to take up to the next level and become really the the star of the team I mean I'm talking about guys like uh, Higuain and also Pedro Santos those guys were kind of like supporter cast for the crew last season and they really stepped up in this game and also the fact that you had Jarzy Zardes scoring a goal I mean whenever if you have Zardes scoring a goal for you then you know good things gonna happen and that is exactly what happened to the crew uh, Montreal obviously lost to Vancouver 2-1 uh, no surprise there you know it was always gonna be tough for the impact to go on the row and go to Vancouver to get a win although you know they didn't have a very bad game they almost got a point out of that um, but unfortunately they lost there and I really think that this should be pretty simple I think the crew should win this one easily I mean Montreal is gonna be a be coming into this game just kind of like what I said last week, you know, they're kind of a rebuilding team, a very young kind of squad that is just kind of getting some experience. They're trying to trying to see if they can, like, improve on some of their young start. And, you know, they're probably just going to be near the bottom of the table. And Columbus, after that impressive win against TFC, I just don't see what can slow them down in this game. And they're also playing at home, too. And that's another interesting thing. How many people are going to actually show up for this home game? Because I've been hearing that they've been saying that they want to, like, kind of boycott this game and the fact that they're not happy the crew is moving to Austin. And, you know, the Save the Crew kind of campaign, the fact that they want to boycott this this team and they don't really want to support a t team that has an owner that want to relocate but I just think that for if that is how they do it I think that's the wrong way to do it you know I, I'm a, I'm kind of like part of this campaign with the save the crew situation but you know I really think boycotting is not a good idea I think if you're going to get your owner and just kind of pressure him to not relocate your team to Austin then fill up those seats then sell out this game, prove that you still have that kind of support and stuff like that. Because in some ways, I feel like the the owner uh, pre-call kind of kind of is forcing the crew's fan to kind of like boycott this game. Because if they boycott this game, basically they just fell into pre-call trap here. Because they they know that you know okay, yep, fans are not showing up. That is why I am moving. To Austin even though it's pretty clear that they are boycotting and stuff like that so I really think for the crew fans and certainly for people that is joining the save the crew campaign please just show up in the game sell out the game and just really put a lot of pressure on pre and potentially Don Gabbard uh, the GM to do something about this situation because it's pretty clear that this situation it's been it's a very kind of complicated situation right now and it's just going to continue to linger as the season goes on but either way let's talk about the next game uh, the revs against the Rapids um, the Revs, of course, lost last week against the Union. Uh, Colorado is playing their first game of the season, and I call this game the Sad Derby. Why do I call this game the Sad Derby? Because both of these teams are potentially going to be finished in the bottom of the table, and they are not a very good team. And I think this probably is Sad Derby version 2.0 for the refs because last week they kind of played that sad derby against the union and things just completely fell apart for them i mean they got two of their their best center back sent off for that game and now coming into this game there is a lot of question of who is going to replace those two guys or if they're going to replace them i, I don't really know if they still have enough center back to you know trying to replace them and it really doesn't matter if they're gonna try to find a replacement because we still know that the the revs defense is going to be absolutely shit uh the good news is they are playing against a rapids team that you know doesn't really have a very strong attack and for the rapids this is the first chance to prove that you know some of the moves that they made this offseason where they signed a lot of championship kind of guy they signed a lot of player from the england 
English Championship. Um, that is something that I haven't seen any MLS team done. I haven't seen a lot of MLS team just go to England and decide to sign a lot of players from the second tier. I mean, I'm, I don't know if it's going to work out or not. But I guess we'll find out starting in this game. And this is a big game for the Rapids too. Because this is a game that they can maybe prove themselves that... Hey, maybe we're not going to be finishing bottom this year. But I really think this is a big game for the Revs too. Because if the Revs lose this game, then you might as well just paper them in by finishing last in the, in the Eastern Conference. I mean, lose, first lose to the Union, which is one of the... Potentially one of the worst team in the league and now you lose to, to the Rapids at home. Yeah, yikes That would not be good. So certainly for the Revs. It's a big game, but so is for the Rapids They want to see if their their players that they sign throughout the offseason actually of course work out Next up RSL versus LAFC RSL drew 1-1 to FC Dallas last week Well, LAFC got a surprising 1-0 win over the Seattle Sounders and really for this game for LAFC We're gonna find out if that Seattle game was just fool's goals the fact that they kind of got a very lucky 1-0 win against a very short-handed kind of Seattle Sounders team or are they actually for real? Are they actually a team that is going to be really challenging and really kind of like the squad that they have had is going to really be serious and potentially make it to the playoffs? I mean, for RSL, obviously this is a big game for them. This is a good chance for them to get a win after, you know, they kind of let that three points slip away from their fingertip by conceding a own goal in the 86 minute against FC Dallas and you know I really am very skeptical about LAFC coming into this game and getting something or get I think they maybe get a point out of this but that is the best I can say I really don't think they're gonna get all three points especially the fact that they're gonna be playing a much better team than the Seattle Sounders were I mean this like I said, the Sounders were playing their second team, and they even got outplay in that game. I mean, they kind of got really lucky, the fact that the Sounders did not have their shooting boots on in that game, and they escaped with a one nothing win. Um, and I really think RSL sh is just a team that, you know, is not going to have that off day. I mean, they had an off day against FC Dallas, but at home, they're just really, really strong. They're one of the strongest home side from last season, so... I expect RSL to win this one and really kind of bring a couple of those LAFC fans that is kind of like in dreamland right now back to reality because, come on, you just beat a Sounders team that had had a, a kind of, had a backup kind of team and you just barely beat them also. So, yeah, I, I can see it. RSL should be able to get this win, uh, but meanwhile, Next up, Chicago versus Sporting KC. Chicago is going to be playing their first game of the season. It's also their home opener. And for Sporting KC, they got a 2-0 loss last week to NYCFC. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this last week, but besides the fact that Sporting KC, uh, it was definitely a painful loss at home, but it also is the fact that this is a team that looks like it's having the same problem as last season. And that is they just cannot score goals. And as much as this team has a stellar defense, which kind of got tested a little bit in that game by NYCFC, um, as long as if they don't have a goal scorer on their team, this could be a bit of a problem. And I really hope Sporting KC won't fail in that same trap that the Rapids were a couple of years ago when they were coming off of the year with a stellar defense but really nothing going up front and then heading into the second year with that sort of same stellar d defense and then just completely fell apart from last season. I hope this morning KC won't fall in that same trap and for the Chicago Fire I mean you know this is the first time they will be playing without David Akam and certainly they also have some big injuries coming into this game. I mean, they had a good, pretty good preseason, but 
preseason really doesn't mean anything. This is actually the real thing. So this is going to be interesting to see how Chicago is going to do. And maybe Chicago can take some lesson that Columbus did um, last week when, you know, Columbus, there was a lot of question about how they're going to be playing without two of their best stars with Justin Miram and Ola Kamara moving on from the crew. Well, Chicago might as well just take that same lesson and say that, you know, maybe we don't really need David Akam. Maybe some of our supporting cast and maybe our main core that feature the likes of Bastian Schreinsteiger, um, Dax McCarty, and Nikolic can can somehow step up and just carry this team again, even without a calm in the team. So, should be a very interesting game. I can see this one being a draw. Um, you know, Sporting KC is definitely desperate to try to avenge their loss last week. They certainly want to get something out of it. But then again, one thing that Sporting KC also really struggled last season, uh, besides Houston, that is a team that really struggle on the road. A lot of people don't realize that Sporting KC was another team that struggled on the road. They had only two home wins last season, which was the fewest in the league. Well, not really the fewest. I think they're tied for the fewest. I think Houston had also had two row wins. So, yeah, they really struggled on the road last season. And it's up to them to really try to fix that and hopefully get out of a win in this game. Um, either way, next up, we got Houston versus Vancouver. Both teams, of course, won their first week game. Uh, Houston made a huge statement by absolutely slapping Atlanta for nothing at BBV8 Compass Stadium. While Vancouver also won at home. They won. Uh, they beat Montreal Impact 2-1 at BC Place. Um, and I'll tell you what, this is going to be a very fun game. I mean, these two teams are teams that has kind of the same philosophy. They are two teams that love to counterattack. Now, of course, in this game, you know, both teams can't just just use their counterattacking method because one team has to dominate possession. Or maybe what happened is if you have like two counterattacking teams, what I would think that could happen means that there's going to be a lot of end-to-end -end stuff that is going to happen. And, you know, I think Houston will have an edge in this one because they have the speed in the end-to-end -end stuff. They definitely have, um, you know, the speed obviously come from the winger position with Kyoto and also Albert Elise just running the, the flank and just completely outpace those fullbacks and completely putting the center backs out of position to try to defend them. So yeah, I think Houston certainly have an advantage of this. You know, Vancouver is a team that surprisingly the last season, they didn't really do that badly on the row. I mean, sure. Yes, they didn't had a very good row record, but at least it was better than any Western Conference team last season. I think they have five row wins last season or six. I don't quite remember, but it was definitely better than most team in the Western Conference that, you know, most team in the Western Conference last season had an absolute atrocious road record. So, you know, maybe Vancouver can upset Houston, but I just think that Houston, with what they did to Atlanta last week, and it's pretty clear that this is a team that is going to be relying that home form again, and it's just going to be unstoppable at home and making BBVA Compass Stadium a fortress again. Um, I think Houston could win this one. I think they will win the duel of that counter-attacking style and that end-to-end -end style, but either way, this game should be very interesting, and I'm certainly... Um, I might watch this game. I don't know what time this game actually happens, uh, but I definitely will keep an eye on this one because this should be very fun to watch as a neutral. Uh, but next up, it's going to be the New York Red Bulls taking on the Portland Timbers. Um, you know, the Red Bulls are playing their first game of the season, technically, because they have played already three kind of competitive game in CCL already and the Timbers of course are back on the road they are doing part two of this very long road trip to start off the season because of the renovation at Providence Park 
And they start out this long road trip with a loss against the LA Galaxy. And, you know, obviously, <coughs> for the Red Bulls, the question for this match is whether or not if Jesse Marsh is going to be actually kind of take this match very seriously and put hit his A squad. For me, I think he shouldn't do that because you got a CCL game in midweek against Tijuana and you are up to nothing in that that tie and you have a chance to make it to the semi-final. And, you know, if I'm Jesse Marsh, I would just sit out some of my most important starters like Tyler Adams uh, and maybe Kaku also. And rest them for that game because that is gonna be a very big game for the Red Bulls. And you know, I know the Red Bulls are not a team that has openly said that they are going to be focused solely on the CCL. They're not like the Seattle Sounder where they just say we're gonna focus on the CCL. That's our first priority, and then of course the league. And hence, that's why last week when they play against LAFC, they put a very weak squad. But you know, if I'm the Red Bulls, and if I'm Jesse Marsh, I think the smart thing to do here is just start a kind of B squad. I mean, Portland is still a very good team, but after what I saw from them against the Galaxy and how shaky that defense is, yeah, I really don't know if Portland is going to be as good as they were last season. I mean, you know, obviously for Portland, you know, this, this is a... This is definitely a big game for them because if the Red Bulls does start a very weak squad, then certainly the pressure for the Timbers to win is going to be much higher than when the Red Bulls are going to be putting a fairly strong squad. I mean, this is they are expected to try to break down their B squad and hopefully just have enough in the defensive end. And, you know, the defensive end, I've been saying it last week with the Timbers and I kind of said it earlier but that is an area that I just have so much concern because this defense looked just as bad against the Galaxy as the Atlanta defense when they play against Houston and you know the only difference is Houston completely punished Atlanta by that bad defense. LA didn't quite do that. LA missed some really big opportunity that could have easily just punished Portland and that game could have easily gone 4 or 5 nothing in favor of the galaxy so that is thing one thing that they need to fix and you know for me I will say that if the Red Bulls go with a weaker squad then I think this is gonna be a draw but if they go with a stronger squad then I think the Red Bulls should win this the Timbers are just not as good as they were last season and you kind of start seeing this kind of Timbers kind of trend where a lot of Timbers fan has also talked about this and how for whatever reason this team one year makes the playoffs and then the very next year they just drop back down and miss the playoffs I mean it's it's very weird it's very kind of inconsistent kind of stretch that they've been going for the last couple of year based on their history in the last couple of years in MLS but either way um, next up we got Orlando City versus the Minnesota United um, and a subscriber in my review video talked about how they love the content that I am doing. They love what I'm doing with this preview and review stuff. But he also kind of mentioned about me not actually talk about the injuries and kind of like the other factors into that game. And first of all, I want to thank that subscri subscriber or that viewer that, of course, make that comment because I didn't do that. And I think because I didn't do that, I made a huge mistake on Orlando City part because looking at Orlando City and looking at the squad that they started in the last game, it was very, very weak. And there is a reason why they started a very weak squad because Orlando City is actually sort of in an injury crisis right now. Jason Christ just had to juggle so much injury right now. Pretty much the players that they brought in from the summer, or not the summer, but the winter. Um, guys like Sasha Kleshton, uh, Justin Miram, um, and Oro Rosso, uh, Dylan Powell, and uh, Dom Dwyer. Well, Dom Dwyer got brought in in the summer, but pretty much except for Justin Miram, 
all those guys are out or suspended. And coming into this game, it's going to be the same story again. They're going to just only have Justin Miram as the only guy that they had after they bought so much and they made so much changes to their squad. And now they also will not have PC, who of course got sent off in the last game in the midfield. So there's going to be a question of who's going to replace him in that spot. And, you know, they're playing against a Minnesota team that, you know, was absolutely dreadful in that game against the Quakes. And really, the only reason why they, I said that they... They kind of, they actually looked like they had some fight. Was because the Quakes decided to completely switch off after 80 minutes. And in the last 10 minutes, they decided to finally wake up. And unfortunately, it was just a little bit too, little too late. And this obviously, for Minnesota, doesn't get any easier. Um, you know, Orlando, even with a weaker squad against DC United, they look very impressive, even when they were down to 10 men. So, yeah, I reckon, you know, even with the injuries that Orlando City has, this is a very good opportunity to get the get a win. And they really need this win because they're playing at home. You do not want to drop back-to-back -back losses at home to start off the season. I mean, if you do not get anything... Out, well, not back-to-back -back losses, but back-to-back -back games without getting any single points at home. That is not a good thing to do because in the MLS, you need to win your home games. And to have your first two home games drop like that, that puts a lot of pressure on the, the road. And usually road teams are not... Uh, going on the road is definitely a huge disadvantage for many MLS teams. And for Orlando, they need to win this. They just simply have to win this, even with the injuries that they have. Um, and also Minnesota, they also have injury to um, add Abu Denladi to that injury list too, because I think he suffered an injury. And hence, that's why he came off and Ramirez, of course, come on. You know, I didn't also mention this with the last game with Minnesota. I don't get what was Adrian he thinking by not putting Christian Ramirez in that game. Like, why in the world do you leave one of your best striker and probably the, the best kind of guy on your team on the bench to start off a huge impressive game I mean it's 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 just so strange and it's it's no wonder why Orlando City fans are happy that Heath is no longer the manager of them because he makes some really weird decision and that was a very strange decision the fact that leaving Ramirez uh, on the bench in a pretty big game and we don't know if he's going to do it again against Orlando City. Well, most likely he wouldn't because, you know, without Dan Lottie in there, they don't really have a actual striker except for Kevin Molino for them. So, yeah. But either way, now let's move on to the next one. We've got two more games left. Um, if you're still watching this video, thank you for the support. Thank you for continuing to watch this video. I know it started to get a little bit long, but I want to get get into a little bit deep information about these games. Um, but yeah, uh, next one, Atlanta versus DC United. Uh, Atlanta, obviously the big story from last week. They completely shit the bed against Houston. Completely fell apart by losing 4 nothing against Houston. And it was just an absolute embarrassing loss for Atlanta. Uh, DC United, of course, um, drew 1-1 away to Orlando City. Now, coming into this game for Atlanta United, you know, the good news for Atlanta is that they're going to be playing a weaker team. Um, and they also are back home, which is good thing for them because they always tend to win at home. The bad news for Atlanta United is that the weak team that they are playing is DC United. And if you mention DC United to any Atlanta United fans um, and any Atlanta United fans that saw them play throughout the whole season, then they would have nightmares and PTSD kind of moment whenever they saw Atlanta play DC United because of all three games that Atlanta played DC United, all three resort in DC United winning. I mean, I honestly don't know what to say about how in the world did DC 
able to get free straight win against an Atlanta team. And the other funny thing about that is if Atlanta would have won one of those free games, they would have actually finished second last year in the Eastern Conference. Because last year, I think they were only like two points back of the Eastern Conference um, when the whole Eastern Conference was finished. So if they would have won one of those games against DC United, they would have been in second place. They didn't even have to worry about a first round game. They didn't even have to worry about a game until the second round. So, you know, that is how huge it was. The fact that Atlanta just for some reason cannot beat DC United. It just feels like... DC United is the biggest bogey team for Atlanta, and I just don't know how DC United are doing to this to Atlanta. I mean, are they playing it? I, I didn't actually like watch most of the game, but every time I see DC United beating Atlanta, I'm like, what? What's what's going on? Why is the worst team able to beat one of the best team in the East all of a sudden? But with all kidding aside, Atlanta really need this. You do not want to start a season with a back-to-back -back loss. And I know, you know, I heard that some colonists and some media talked about how, yeah, it's still a very kind of young kind of MLS season. We're only two weeks, and you can't really draw a big conclusion on the fact that teams got off to a slow start. Oh, no, 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 no. You do not understand, okay? If you get off to just such a slow start, like... This. If Atlanta drop another game, then this really puts the pressure on them to really get some some big wins down the stretch. And against a team like DC United that is not very good at all, they really need to win this one. And they really need to solve this kind of hoodoo they, that they have with DC United. If they don't, they're going to have to do it again two more times. And I'll be shocked if DC United can... can stay undefeated and will never lose to Atlanta by the end of the year because something must be going on between DC must have a secret formula to def able to defeat Atlanta that the rest of the league probably don't know well to be fair maybe Houston kind of stole that formula from DC from the last game but either way let's actually now Moving on to the last game. Uh, I know we're about 32 minutes into this video. We are almost there, boys and girls. Um, but, yeah, this is the last game of the week. By the way, this game is a Sunday game. Um, it's a 12 o'clock kickoff my time. 3 o'clock kickoff in Atlanta. Um, but, yeah, the last game, NYCFC against LA Galaxy. NYCFC got a massive win last week. Right. Sorry about that. Some... One of my family member just knock on the door, but either way, um, you know NYCFC of course got a massive win against Sporting KC, while LA Galaxy also got a massive win last weekend against the Portland Timbers. And you know this is a game that some people will say that LA Galaxy. This is the game that it will prove that was it actually fool's goal and was it actually just a fluke that the, they beat the Portland Timbers in the last game. And if you're going to say that, if you're going to say that if LA Galaxy are not going to beat NYCFC on the road, then it's pretty clear that this is just like last season. And if you say that, you are crazy and also deluded and also have no idea what's going on. NYCFC is one of the best team in the league. And this is a team that is going to definitely challenge for supporter shield in the East. And really going to put a lot of pressure on TFC this year for the supporter shield. And they proved it in that game against Sporting KC. And I really think that, you know, this is a really tough game for the Galaxy. And with the way that, you know, this is a game that I really think they're going to be tested from top to bottom. First, we're going to see if this LA Galaxy team can break out this NYCFC defense, which is also really, really decent. And whether or not if the Dos Santos brothers can continue that, continue to do very well and also can Ola Kamara score against against big teams and stuff like that and then the other question with LA Galaxy is that how is the defense gonna gonna um, 
be ready to face probably the most deadly kind of attack right now. I mean, when you have have a attack NYCFC had that featured the guys like David Villa, um, Jesus Medina, uh, Rodney Harris, and Maxi Morales. Yeah, you're going to have a hands full against those guys. So it's going to be a huge test for this Galaxy t defense, which, you know, I thought in that game against the Timbers, they did pretty well for the first half of the um, the first half of that game, but then the second half, it kind of got a little bit sloppy at times. So, yeah, this is a big test for the Galaxy. But I won't say that if the Galaxy lose this, that this is a complete fluke, that they just are going to be back to their form they were last season because it's NYCFC. It's such a tough team to beat, and you're going on the road at Yankee Stadium, a place that, you know, people always complain about the feel and stuff like that being very small, but NYCFC just takes that as an advantage. And, yeah, it's going to be a difficult game for the Galaxy. And I, because of that, I really don't think they're going to win this. I think NYCFC is going to win this. And if the Galaxy does win this, then they, of course, can make a big statement and saying that they are back. That they are going to be like the Galaxy team in the past. But, yeah, let me know in the comments below what do you think of this game. We have finally made through all those nine games after almost 35 minutes of recording. Uh... I try to make it shorter, but unfortunately I can't because I had a lot to go through in these games. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash that subscribe button. I'll try to watch as many games as possible. Obviously, I have to go on Saturday and also on Sunday because I have to do the Sports Hop series, stuff like that. So yeah. Let me know in the comments what do you think is gonna happen in most of this game. Any you guys can give me a prediction for these nine games and I of course will see you guys next time and I'll see you guys on Sunday for the review show.